Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to week eight of NFL football previews and predictions. Uh, I'm here with my girlfriend, Lily Singbush. Uh, we went to the Bills game last week in uh, Buffalo's a little too close for comfort, but still extremely easy victory over the Miami Dolphins. Uh, and we're at the halfway point of the season now, coming into week eight. And we have a whole new slate of football games to go through. And we are, to make this a little more interesting this week, me and her are going to go head-to-head -head as we're in a football video and she's wearing a hockey hat. And I'm going to win. We're going to have a little, we're going to have us a little competition. A little predictions off. A little, uh, a, a little, a little battle of football predictions here between me and my girlfriend. And the winner will uh, obtain bragging rights. And uh, I have a feeling if I lose, I'm going to get tickled at some point in the future. Absolutely. Uh, I did not agree to those terms, but nonetheless, I feel like it's going to happen. So yep. uh, it is what it is. It doesn't matter because I'm going to win anyways. Uh -uh. Uh, but let's, let's get into it. Let's get right into it. Uh, we're starting off the uh, 1 o'clock Sunday games with the Denver Broncos taking on the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts, 4-2, and two, having a much better than expected season for themselves. The Broncos, 2-5, and five, having a much worse than expected season, I think, having brought in Joe Flacco, and that defense has vastly underperformed in Denver. I still believe in the Colts. I like them a lot. I, I like this team. I love their coach. This is a really well-coached football team. And their defense, which I thought had holes in it, has been playing better lately, too. So if they can get that put together, and this is a very dangerous team, uh, I'm going with the Colts to win this game. I'm going to the Broncos all the way. Okay. Moving on, we got the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the 2-4 and four Tampa Bay Buccaneers, taking on the 3-4 and four Tennessee Titans. The Tennessee Titans... Uh, Ryan Tannehill came in in place of Marcus Mariota, who was uh, dr absolutely dragging this team down. A and the Buccaneers probably should be better than their record. They're not playing well at all. Jameis Winston. Actually, Jameis Winston and Mariota were drafted back-to-back -back in the same draft class, and neither of them have lived up to their expectations. Uh, Ryan Tannehill will get the start this week for the Titans. And I didn't think he played a great game last week, but he played well enough to not lose but I don't really think Ryan Tannehill is going to be the long-term solution for this Titans team. But then again, I look at this Bucks team, and I just don't, I, I just don't see how they can bounce back from that god-awful performance uh, in London two weeks ago against the Panthers. I'm going with Tennessee for this one. I'll also go with Tennessee. All right, okay. So we have one different and one the same. Uh, going into the Cardinals versus the Saints. Now, I like the Cardinals. I vouched for them. And don't look now, but they've won three of their they've won three games in a row now. Their last three games have been W's. Granted, they've been playing some inferior teams, but I've been saying all season that I think this Cardinals team can be competitive. I think they can give some of these some of these better teams a difficult time if they continue to get better and so, and they've done that so far and they've done it to the tune of three straight wins can they do it to the Saints though who will be without Drew Brees again but are undefeated since losing their starting quarterback I don't know if they can but if you look at it Teddy Bridgewater hasn't exactly been beating the world in his time as a starting quarterback for the Saints uh, they've mainly been getting carried by a, uh, by a defense that, despite a shaky start to the season, has really started to get it put together and started playing well. Uh, I like the Cardinals, I really do, but I, re but I, but I think the Saints are going to keep it going. What do you think? I'll go with the Saints. Cool. And didn't the Bills lose after winning three games in a row? That's true. That is true, but we lost to the Patriots. Okay, that is important. We lost to the Patriots. The Patriots are an actual good team. Why are we doing this? Why are you doing this? I'm just doing some psychological warfare. Why, though? I picked the Saints. The Cardinals were the team that won three in a row. 
and I'm I, picking them. I'm picking the Saints. I know. Continue. So what? <laughs> Next up, we have the Cincinnati Bungles heading uh, heading to the West Coast to take on the LA Rams. The Rams, I feel like, have been having a bit of a disappointing season. Jared Goff hasn't been playing well. Uh, Todd Gurley has been absolutely invisible on this offense. Uh, but they're still 4-3. and three. They're coming off a pretty impressive-looking win against the Falcons last week. And the Cincinnati Bungles are just dead in the water. They are, they are an absolutely terrible team right now. Uh, I'm going with the Rams for sure. Rams. We agree on that one as well. Moving on to the New York Jets taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars and Jets. Oh boy, that that was bad last week. I mean, I didn't think you were going to beat New England, but I at least thought you would play better than you did, especially coming off a pretty impressive butt whooping that you gave to the Dallas Cowboys a week ago. That was embarrassing. I don't know what happened there, uh, uh, but the Jaguars, the Jaguars have a very good opportunity here to get back to 500, and if they can get back to 500 with the way that this AFC has been shaping up so far, they absolutely have the, have a chance to sneak into the playoffs. I don't know if they will, but they'll definitely be setting themselves up well uh, if they go f if they get to four and four. It's a tough call for me because I don't necessarily think the Jets are as bad as they played last week against the Patriots, but I also don't think they're as good as they played against Dallas two weeks ago. My guess is probably that they're somewhere in the middle, and um, I, don't, I don't know. This is you, you. Why don't you pick this one? You pick this one first. Okay, I'll go with the Jags. I want to say the Jags too. You know what, Just I'm going to be different. I'm gonna be bold. I'm gonna be different. I'm gonna say the Jets win this game. I'm gonna say they bounce back. Good luck with that. <clears throat> Next up, we have the New York Giants taking on the Detroit Lions. Uh, the Giants have the the Giants kind of tapered off uh, in the last couple weeks after a pretty magical start to the season. They won two. They won two in a row after uh, putting Daniel Jones in as their starting quarterback. And they turned around and lost three straight. So things have kind of balanced out for the Giants. They're losing games again. And whereas the Lions, the Lions absolutely have to win this game. I was able to give them the benefit of the doubt when they were able to hang in with the Chiefs. And I was even, and I was able to forgive them for the loss in Green Bay, considering they got absolutely shafted by bad officiating in that game. Uh, but now the Lions, you gotta start showing me something because you're two, three, and one right now, and your season is in danger of completely falling apart if you start losing uh, any more any more games from here. So I was able to, I was able to make excuses for you at the beginning of the season after a pretty promising start, but this is the point now where you gotta start showing me something. And I don't think this will be an easy game, but I'm going to have faith in the, that the Lions are able to bounce back and pull this one out against a Giants team that has been struggling of late. What do you think? Giants. Ooh, okay. <clears throat> That's a bold prediction. I like that. Go big or go home. I like that. Thank you. Next up, we have the Chargers and the Bears. The Bears, 3-3. Three and three. They, they got to they gotta get things turned around. I mean, they're 500, but... They're in a very strong division right now, and they're in danger of uh, getting left in the dust as the Vikings and the Packers start to put more distance in between them. Meanwhile, the Chargers have just been playing terribly this season. It has been absolutely terrible. So yeah, as I was saying, the Chargers have just been playing, have just been playing va vastly disappointing football, constantly playing down to inferior competition. Uh, the Bears, though, what are you doing? What? Are you just doing it? Are we going to do this the whole video now? No. Okay. Continue. For any of you watching, yes, this is normal behavior for her. Yeah, the, the Bears, they've, they've been struggling, especially on defense. Khalil Mack uh, has gone from being an absolute wrecking ball on that defense to being nowhere to be found. Uh, but... I think the Bears win this game. 
mostly because I have no faith in the Chargers to do anything right now the way they're playing. I'm going to go with the Chargers. Okay. That's adorable. Next up we have the Seahawks and the Falcons, and there's not really much to say about this matchup. The Seahawks have been playing fantastic football at the beginning of the season, despite taking a tough loss to the Ra Ravens last week. But the Falcons are just absolutely dead in the water. You wonder how much longer Dan Quinn is going to be their head coach, and you also wonder how much longer it's going to be before they just start selling the farm and uh, get ready to rebuild this football team because they are not going anywhere right now with this coaching staff or this roster. I think the Seahawks win pretty easily. I suppose I'll go with the Seahawks. Hello, brothers and sisters. So I was at, I'm editing my, uh, our football week eight prediction video right now, and so we we had a little problem. The Bills segment that we filmed, we actually filmed separately from the rest of the video, and for whatever reason, that segment did not get transferred over onto my computer from the camera that we used and the camera that we used is now gone. I don't really know what happened cuz I was sure I was certain that I had I was certain that I had transferred over every video file that was on that camera before I left. Uh and it's just not on there. So so I'll just I'll just kind of go over what I said again in the in the prediction video. Uh, Lily and I both picked the Bills to win that game. I mean I wasn't ever going to pick against Buffalo in that game, but we're playing the Eagles at home. The Eagles are a very banged up team right now. They have a lot of injuries on that defense. They have a lot of injuries on that offense. Deshaun Jackson, uh, I, sa I said in the prediction video that we did when we filmed it that if that Deshaun Jackson is probably the biggest difference maker on that Eagles team, and if he plays, I think that gives Philadelphia a pretty good chance to beat Buffalo. But if he doesn't play, which right now it's looking like he doesn't because he hasn't practiced all week, but if he doesn't play then that Eagles offense is incredibly limited and I think much easier to defend for a Bills defense that has done a pretty good job up to this point, for the most part, shutting down opponents. Uh, and yeah, the Eagles, the Eagles are in trouble if they lose this game. Uh, they could be in danger of having their season slip away from them and probably missing the playoffs. I mean, they might not if they lose this game. Uh, Dallas is on the bye week, so they don't lose any ground on... They don't lose any extra ground on the Cowboys. However, they still have that loss to Dallas last week that's going to loom large when playoff time comes around. And this is a game that Philly's got to win. Uh... But you look at their defense, their secondary is very banged up and has been giving up a lot of big plays lately. It is looking like Jalen Mills is going to maybe come back into the lineup this week, which would be a big addition for them. But we don't know what Ronald Darby's status is looking like uh, going into this game. He was a healthy scratch last week. Uh, so we don't know what the deal is with him. But the front seven for Philadelphia has not been playing well. Their pass rush has not been getting to quarterbacks. Uh, Buffalo's offensive line has been streaky this season. They've kind of had a difficult time protecting Josh Allen, but they haven't. But I feel they have been playing better as of late. But they but the pass rushes are still getting home to Josh Allen, and that's something that you got to be concerned about if you're a Bills fan. Uh, as, as for Josh Allen himself, I do think he needs to play better. He had a turnover free game last week, which is big, but you would love to see him start connecting on some of those deep throws that he's been missing on. Uh, and if you can get that put together, 
and get that con- and then and get that to be a consistent part of his game like it was last year. And I think this Bills offense is primed to really take off. Now, do they actually do that? Is the real question. I think they have a good opportunity to, as we said, Philadelphia secondary, big question mark with all the injuries, but. I'm not necessarily confident right now going into this game after the performance that we saw last week against Miami that they're going to be able to do that. I would expect I would expect to see Cole Beasley get more involved in the passing game as Philadelphia's nickel corner position is up in the air as well. Uh, you're hoping to get Duke Williams back. He went down last week with a shoulder injury. Hopefully he's okay. And Matt Milano's got to get back into the lineup as soon as possible. I mean, I know they like to err on the side of caution when it comes to these soft tissue injuries. They did that with Singletary. It looks like they're doing the same thing with Matt Milano. But Milano's got to get back into the into the lineup as soon as possible because Maurice Alexander did not have a good game at all last week. And he was a liability in that linebacking core against Miami. Uh, so Milano, he's the, he's the guy to... He is the guy to watch for this Bills on the injury front. Uh, he's got to get back in the lineup, or at least get Corey Thompson healthy enough to get back into the lineup. Is Corey Thompson still a step up from Maurice Alexander? Maurice Alexander, like I said, complete liability uh, filling in for Matt Milano. And they're playing... They, they are playing a team that will fully take it... That is more equipped to take advantage of of his weaknesses than Miami was last week. But like I said, me and Lily both picked the Bills to win this game. I wish that segment had gotten in, but it did not, so that's unfortunate. However, uh, we both picked the Bills to win. Uh, Just wanted to plug this in, and uh, we will see you in the next video. Enjoy the games on Sunday, have a blessed week, and uh, go Bills. So that brings us to the 4 o'clock games, starting with the Carolina Panthers, who don't look now, but have won. They are 4-0 right now without Cam Newton as their starting quarterback. They are taking on the uh, 6-0 with their starting quarterback, San Francisco 49ers. Everybody's been saying, like, uh, they, they, I believe believe in the 49ers over the Bills because, you know, I think they're better than the Bills. And the Bills have a soft schedule and yada, 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 yada. Which, fine. They have a better record than the Bills, but the Bills have only lost one game. So, don't get too carried away, 49ers fans. And Jimmy Garoppolo still has yet to show me that he can play uh, th- that he can that he can play to the level that this team needs consistently. I still feel like this team is getting carried by its defense, and that generally isn't a winning formula once we get into January football. And you can't count the Panthers out either. I mean, Kyle Allen has been playing well. He's not a world beater or anything like that, but he's been playing well enough to not lose games, and he hasn't been making those critical mistakes that costs his team. And this Panthers defense is also getting better. I think this is going to be a pretty close game, but these close games... Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to say the Panthers win this one. I'm going to say they're going to deal with San Francisco their first loss of the season. What do you say? San Francisco all the way. Okay. <clears throat> I'm I'm not confident in that one, but you know what? Fortune favors the brave, as they say in that one musical that I watched. Next up, we have the Cleveland Browns heading to Foxborough to take on the also undefeated New England Patriots. Uh, For as salty as I am that the 49ers are undefeated, I am twice as salty that the Patriots are are undefeated. Uh... They just traded for Mohamed Sanu from the uh, and from the Atlanta Falcons, so uh, that certainly helps a receiving core that has been both struggling and injured most of the time. I still think, though, that the Patriots have been benefited by a pretty soft schedule. I mean, they I don't think they I mean they've I mean you look at the teams they've beaten. They've beaten the Dolphins, the Jets without Sam Darnold. Uh, they haven't been beating good. They beat the Giants too. They haven't been beating very good teams, and it took the and it took them head hunting our starting quarterback for them to beat the Buffalo Bills in Week Four. So, I mean, 
The Patriots probably will go deep in the playoffs again just because it's such a weak conference, but I this is definitely not the juggernaut Patriots team that we have seen in years past. I do think they'll beat the Browns, though, because the Browns have been just plagued by uh, underwhelming quarterback play and just truly atrocious coaching. Uh, I think the Patriots are going to win this, and I am begging you to pick against the Patriots. What was the question? Browns or Patriots? What'd you pick? I picked the Patriots because it's logical. I'm begging you to pick the Browns. Patriots. I dare you to pick the Browns. Going to Patriots. Next. Particularly. Next up, we have the Oakland Raiders taking on the Houston Texans. The Oakland Raiders. I gotta say, I was surprised with how well they've started the season. They were three and two and in the race for the playoffs, but they got absolutely spanked last week by the Green Bay Packers, and they're going up against probably an even more explosive offense in the Houston Texans. And last week pretty much just served to confirm all my doubts about this Raiders team. Their defense still has a lot of holes in it, and I don't think they really have the passing attack to, to, to make up for it either. And this is against a Texans team that if you're going to beat them, you're going to have to put up some points. So I think the Texan, but the Texans coming off a loss against the uh, the Indianapolis Colts, so they're also reeling. I mean that game was much closer than the Raider game, but the Tex, both of these teams are coming off of losses. Uh, and if the Raiders can replicate the formula that the Colts used to win that game, then I think they have a chance. But I don't know. That was not a good showing last week in Green Bay, and uh, I think they're gonna have a very tough time containing Deshaun Watson and this uh, and the weapons that he has on this offense. I'm going with the Texans here. Raiders. All right. A respectable pick. Thank you. We're going to raid that game from you. And that brings us to Sunday Night Football, where the Green Bay Packers will be taking on the Kansas City Chiefs, who are now without their star starting quarterback, Patrick Mahomes who is looking to be out at least three weeks with a dislocated kneecap. That is huge. And uh, I don't know if the Chiefs are exactly in any danger of losing that division because the next closest team to them right now is the Raiders. But they c it, it, it could hurt them down the, down the road if Mahomes comes back and they drop a bunch of games without him. And it, it'll hurt their. It'll hurt them in terms of seeding for the playoffs and perhaps and potentially getting a first round bye or even home field advantage. Whereas the Packers, the Packers are just on cruise control right now. Aaron Rodgers is, is finally starting to play like the Aaron Rodgers we all know and love. Finally starting to catch up to the to the defense, which has been dominant for the most part of this season. I, I really like this Packers team a lot. I believe in them, and I think they're going to be able to take advantage of a banged-up Chiefs team. And this Chiefs team on defense has not been that great either. I don't have much faith in them to be able to contain the Packers' offense. I'm going to go with Green Bay on this one. I love Kansas City. All right. And next up, we have the uh, what I'm going to call the Why God Bowl, which is the uh, Miami Dolphins taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers on Monday Night Football. A 2-5 team is taking on an 0-6 team on Monday Night Football. Why God, why? Anyways, Dolphins, I don't know what to say. You're a bad team. The effort is there. The effort's really there, but the high-end talent and the skill just isn't. I mean, I guess I could give you guys some credit. Ryan Fitzpatrick did look better at, as their signal caller than Josh Rosen did. It felt like he had a better grasp of the offense and a better command of the huddle than Rosen ever did. But I think the, uh, I think, I think the Dolphins are going to stay true to their tank they're going to they're going to keep their eyes on the prize, which is not the Lombardi Trophy, but 
that quarterback from Alabama who has a very long last name that I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce as their number one overall pick. Uh, I'm going to say the Steelers, and I don't even have to talk about the Steelers to make a case for them because, I mean, they're playing the Dolphins. This should be, this should be an easy win, whether they're starting Mason Rudolph or Devlin Hodges or the <clears throat> or, uh, or, or uh, Steve McNair, the deceased Tennessee Titans quarterback. Uh, the Steelers should win this game easily. What do you think? I mean, you said that the Bills would win easily last week against the Dolphins. Well, they did. No, no, they didn't. And, and when, I, it was, when it was all said and done, the Bills won pretty easily. I mean, let's be honest. Eh, not really. It was never in doubt by the end of the game. The second half, it was never in doubt. But the first half, though. The first half was scary. But we woke up in the second half, we took the lead, and we never gave the lead up. So we won pretty easily. It was closer than it should have been, but it was still a pretty easy win. Okay? Okay? I really think the Dolphins can pull it off. <laughs> At least come close to it, so. I mean, I wouldn't, I, I mean, I'd be, I could hear you as, I, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, uh, I, I mean, I, I, would be, I would believe you if you told me this was a close game, because I don't think the Steelers are that good either, but, I mean, they've beaten, I mean, they've, they've beaten inferior teams. I mean, they're not like the Bengals, so. The Steelers, the Steelers at least have, I don't know, I think the Steelers are just a step above the Dolphins and the Bengals. They can beat, they can beat teams that are worse than them, whereas the Dolphins, they're not beating anybody. I'm sticking with the Steelers. Still going to the Dolphins. Okay, then. Bring it on. All righty. So that is all the football going on this week. Uh, I'll have... I'll have our picks show up on the screen so you can all uh, so you, so you can all keep track of who got which game right, and uh, we'll see who who gets tickled in probably a number of months from now because uh, by the time this video goes up, I'll be long gone in Buffalo, and uh, everybody involved with this video will still be right here in Oneonta. So either either way, I can't lose. Uh, yeah, I can. I can totally lose. But uh, I'm not gonna because I know my football. Sure. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Enjoy the games on Sunday. Have a blessed week and we'll see you in the next video. And as always, want to say it with me? Say what? Go Bills. No. Why? Go Dolphins. <laughs>